morning all. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Lepidico. Lepidico is a publicly listed Australian company. Um, talk about the genesis of, of the company and um, where we are today, how we got to from the, the initial idea through, through to, to, to where we are today. Um, Lepidico is, is, the sole purpose of Lepidico is to get into production uh, as soon as possible with the aim of producing lithium carbonate from uh, lithium containing micas. So here's a sample of uh, lipidolite. Uh, we've developed a process called the Elmax process uh, to directly process lipidolite in a hydrometallurgical process through the battery grade lithium carbonate. So strategic metallurgy, we're a small consul consultancy, a group of uh, qualified metallurgists. We were formed in July 2010. Um, the, the core group of people are, are myself, Gary Johnson and uh, Nick Bynes. We were formerly employed by Neural Process Technology. So our background is hydrometallurgy, particularly uh, nickel, uh, sulphides and laterites. So we use our, our uh, hydromet experience to, to, to push forward with this, this project. Our, our basis is, is, is solely revolved around um, fundamentals. We don't have a cookbook approach. As you all know, every, every deposit is different and we like to really understand the fundamentals before we go through with any test work programs. So if I talk about the Lepidico chronology, it all started in 2014. Um, I'll go through our situation, our thoughts, the idea, uh, first steps, the development, and our progressing through to hopefully 2019 and 2020 where we commercialise the technology. So back in 2014, uh, the three of us were still involved with Strategic. We're a bit bigger at the moment, but um, the, the market was down. There was not a lot to do for, for metallurgists. Um, so really, we were looking for ideas, um, ways to, to reinvigorate the company. Um, and basically, we look at what we know, you know what is our core, core strengths. Um, and this is, uh, takes us through to our thoughts, really. So we, we started in 2012 with Potash West. Uh, the aim. We, we had a two-year program of work there, really looking at trying to extract potassium from, from glauconitic green sands north of Perth. Now, glauconite is a, is a mica. Uh, the value contained of that mica is potassium. Okay, so there was a lot of work there trying to develop a process to extract potash from, the, from those green sands. Those green sands, are, there's plenty of them. So potentially, it's a, it's a huge um, opportunity. Uh, but again, the value of the potassium is, is quite low. So KMAX, KMAX was the process we developed uh, for Potash West and it really revolved around dissolving the mineral and extracting potash from, from the leach liquors. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, the technology is, is, uh, can be used across several different micas and we started to look at micas which had uh, inherent higher value to them and these micas include the lithium, the lithium micas. The pitolite itself contains up to 5% alloy 2 o so there is a... a you know, a valuable component in those micas. There's also valuable byproducts from those micas, including potash. The potash value is high, or the, or the grade is higher in, in, in um, lipidolite than it is in glauconite, uh, and also other valuable uh, metals such as cesium and rubidium, and even silica is something that we can extract from, from these lipidolite samples. Now, why lipidolite? Lipidolite is acid soluble, so we can bypass any roasting step, and we can go straight into a leach circuit, and then straight through to impurity removal and lithium carbonate recovery. So the idea, can we extract lithium from lipidolite? If so, how do we separate, pur purify the valuable metals? Lipidolite has got different impurities than spodumene. So once we get into solution, it's a different back end of the plant. Okay, we need to look at cesium, rubidium, fluoride. These are the impurities that we need to separate from lithium before we can take it th through to a final product. Can we produce saleable products? Lithium carbonate is a high spec to produce battery grade lithium carbonate. We need to remove those impurities to be able to get there. And what are, what are the saleable products? Is it lithium carbonate? Can we produce hydroxide? Potassium, is there a value? Cesium, rubidium, are there values for these, these products? So the first step is where do we get lipidolite from? Now, we're a group of metallurgists sitting in, a, in an office in Belmont. Okay, we didn't have lipidolite in front of us, so where do we get it from? Um, the internet. Okay. Online, um, we bought a sample of lipidolite from a, um, a guy out of Queensland. It was lipidolite from Lipidolite Hill. 
It came in a small box, we put it straight in a crusher, straight into a leach tank, into a leach vessel. So yes, extraction was successful. We used similar conditions to what we knew previously, um, and we can definitely extract lithium from these lipidolite samples. More challenges. What are the impurities? How do we separate lithium with minimal losses? Okay, well that's, that's the key. We can get into solution, but then it's getting it out of solution and separately from the, the, the gang elements that are in solution. So we basically devised a purification regime. It took a while to get there. Okay, we need to understand where all the metals are going and, and, and how we can get them out. But with time, it was successful. We could separate impurities and keep lithium in solution. Is it marketable? We need to recover a product which is consistent with products coming out of the spodumene market. And through time, we managed to get there. We understand what's going on from the, the pitolite ore through to final product. OK, now that's where we're at. OK, we, we really needed to stop and assess where, where we're at and what we need to do next. So this is a sanity check, OK? Is this idea really worth pursuing? Yes, of course it is, OK? Speak, hearing about the demand, um, there's plenty of demand for lithium, there's always demand for potash. So it's definitely worth pursuing. Is there enough lipidolite around? We believe there is. There's several large deposits across the world, um, and there's also a lot of smaller deposits specifically containing lipidolite. Is there a market for lithium carbonate? Absolutely there is. Will it be economic? When you take out roasting and when you look at some of the byproducts you can produce, absolutely it's economic. Strong yes. And the advantages. Lipidolite is very easy to concentrate. Okay, it's a it's, it's very different uh, properties to spodumene. It's very selective in a flotation circuit. Also, DMS will reject some, will concentrate some of the lipidolite. There's no roasting, and we're talking about high recoveries. Okay, we can extract plus 95 percent lithium into solution from lipidolite. So, the back of this knowledge, we decided to push it forward. So what do we need to do to continue the, the development of this program, of this, of this uh, uh, project? More leach tests, different markers, different conditions. We want to optimise the conditions. We want to make sure that we can use those conditions across several different markers. Today we've leached over 15 markers and they all give very similar conditions, very similar results. Um, we needed to modify the impurity removal stages just to ensure that we could maximise the separation from the impurity metals. Uh, we've done that, and the, the losses are, are very low, very low lithium losses across the impurity removal stages. Battery grade, grade quality, we've produced battery grade quality. Do we have a workable flow sheet? Yes, we do. So now what do we do? Okay, what now? Piloting, modelling, why do we need to do it? Water balance. Now, water balance is critical for hydromet processes. If you don't understand your water balance, you can really uh, ruin the project. Okay, if you look at precipitation of lithium carbonate is based on the solubility of lithium carbonate. Okay, coming out of the lithium carbonate circuit, the lithium concentration is about 2.5 gram per litre. If you can't get above that concentration, you will not precipitate lithium. So you need to understand the water balance. Where's the water coming in? If there's too much water coming in, you're going to have big problems down the back end of the plant. So as you pile it, we need to close the loop on all the water streams coming in and out of the circuit. Impurity deportment. Okay, on a batch test you can see where the impurities go, but you need to understand wh what's happening to them when you start to bring solution back around. Can we account for all the impurities and do they go out in the right waste streams or, or product streams? Solid liquid separation. This is where projects fail because the solids just don't settle and you can't filter them. The solid liquid separation properties from the work we've done are really good. And that was one of the main reasons why we wanted to progress this, program, this um, project. Really good solid liquid separation properties. So off the back of that work, um, we run a small scale piloting campaign. Uh, we've done run two, two at this stage. Both campaigns treated around 350 kilos of mica and it was continuous operation for about seven to 10 days. The performance outperformed expectation um, we consistently produce quality lithium carbonate. So the liquor going into that lithium precip circuit um, had the right uh, lithium concentration, it had very low impurities, um, so you know, no issues going forward into producing lithium carbonate. 
It really increased, increased our confidence in the process um, and again allowed us to, to push this project forward. Some big files in this photo. In this. Okay, this is some of the, the uh, photos from the mini plant run we, we conducted. Up the top here is some um, precipitation tanks where we remove a lot of the impurities. Um, the main control is really pH, temperature. Um, as you can see here, this is a, a custom built thickener. The, the, the slurry settles it very well. Um, some more precipitation tanks. Through here is um, some more impurity removal tanks and down the back there is some lithium carbonate precipitation circuit. Some lithium carbonate produced here. So in, in parallel to the development of the technology, um, a provisional patent was lodged. Uh, there was an option to license the technology. It was granted to, to Lithium Australia. Um, the Pitico Proprietary Limited was created. So this is a, a private company. Um, we put the technology into that company and seed capital was raised and that was required to, to continue the development. So we needed that money to uh, build the mini plant, um, construct, operate the mini plant, give it confidence going forward. So Lepidico Proprietary Limited, a private company, it needed to find a home um, and that's where uh, ASX Listed Platypus Minerals got involved. Um, they purchased Lepidico Proprietary Limited uh, for shares, that was in July 2016. Strategic Metallurgy became the largest holder of Platypus and in 2016 the, num the name was then changed to Lepidico Limited. Um, current work to date, there's a feasibility study into a phase one plant. This is looking at pr producing approximately 3,000 tonnes per annum of lithium carbonate. Uh, it requires around 30,000 tonnes of lithium uh, containing mica. It's a small plant but it's the perfect stepping stone to de-risk the technology and take it through to a larger scale plant. Uh, the aim is to be in production in 2019. So we see there's a rapid progression to commercialisation. Um, several reasons why we think we can get it, get it done quite quickly. Um, the feed sources, easy to concentrate. Okay, we can produce a relatively clean lipidolite concentrate. Uh, there's no roasting, so it's direct atmospheric leaching. It's easy to scale, okay? Uh, the kinetics in a, in a small vessel is very consistent to the kinetics in a large tank. It's something that can be done quite easily. It's done, it's done previously in many projects. The purification, crystallisation, precipitation processes are all conventional processes. They all use conventional equipment. It's the order of those, those steps, and the key control is the conditions in those steps. Okay, so it all comes down to the engineering of those steps to ensure that those controls can be implemented. The most important is the chemicals. Okay, this process uses cheap reagents. It uses commercial available reagents that are the cornerstone to most hydromet processes. We dissolve lipidolite with sulfuric acid, we remove the impurities with limestone and lime and precipitate lithium carbonate with sodium carbonate. Okay, they're there's no need to recycle reagents and there's no exotic reagents here which are expensive and from historical um, information they can really cause problems to commercial operations. So we feel it's a, the perfect recipe for quick progression into commercialisation.